Welcome back to D-Lab, and tonight on the bench we have an old Philco tube type radio with some issues. This radio has been here for quite some time, because I haven't been able to get to it, because I have this other pile of repairs that was in front of it. So sorry guys, I know I'm behind, but you know what? Life gets in the way. What can I say? Alright? Anyway, this is a Philco model 3862, which is kind of cool because my dad was born in 38 and I was born in 62. So that kind of motivates me to want to do the video. Now the other thing is, is some of you have been commenting like, hey Terry, do you always have to have wine when you're repairing radios and amps? And then in my last video, I didn't have any wine in there. And then somebody says, well, hey Terry, where's the wine? It's like, guys, make up your mind. What do you want, okay? So you know what? We're going to start off with this dark horse wine, fill in the glass, all right? Boom! Because that's part of the presentation that D-Lab provides. Let's get to the repair. Well, here she is, the model 3862 Philco. You can see cosmetically, it's beautiful. It's well worth fixing, all right? Flip around so you can see the back side. It's all tube type, pretty much looks original, even has the stock dust that these came with, right? So anyway, let's see what's going on with it. <clears throat> I'm sure, like all the other radios of this vintage, it's probably going to hum like mad when we plug her in, okay? Don't have a heart attack, guys. I'm just going to plug it in. It's not going to blow up. Tubes are going to warm up, but we're going to see if it hums. I think this is volume. It's all the way down. Oh yeah, there she is. You can see volume really doesn't do anything. Tuning gives us some scratchiness. So, yep, bath filter caps. We'll start there. Let's take a closer peek inside. You can see the little ID sticker over here, 3862. There's a 5x4 rectifier. 6F6s is here. It's probably the outputs, right? And some other sorted tubes that make the radio do its thing. Everything's here. It looks stock. And right back there, it's a big old filter canoramas. And I betcha that guy's bad. Let's get it out of the cabinet and take a look inside. I've got the screws removed, knobs are popped off. I noticed the speaker cable is a little tight, but let's see if I can get the chassis out. Looks like it's going to cooperate just fine. All right, good deal. Cut to the bottom here. Okay, she's out. You can see that there are some modern caps that have been installed in here, okay? The orange drop, a couple of these Panasonic type. But it appears as though the filter cap is still original. And this was one of those weird ones, kind of has this threaded uh, mounting shaft, right? It's not like your typical filter caps. So he's obviously bad. We're going to start with that. And then there's these guys here. There's an 8 microfarad guy there. And a 20 microfarad up here. I'm going to verify that on the schematic before I change them because it looks like they have been changed in the past. But anyway, let's get the main filter cap changed, fire it back up and see if the hum's gone. So I do need to point out that this radio has a power transformer. So it's not a hot chassis radio like some of the ones I've worked on in the past. So there's not the shock hazard. Obviously there is high voltage present, but it's not going to blast you if you simply touch the chassis. So what I'm going to do is we're going to cut these wires. There's only two of them going into the main filter cap. We're going to get that guy out of here, right? And then we'll replace that with a multi-section cap, which will take place of this 8 microfarad, and I believe the main one is also 8. And somewhere else there's supposed to be a 10, and I bet you it's that 20. So, yep, it is a 8 microfarad cap. Obviously, this is the original made by Pyramid. Pretty wild. So we're just going to get this guy out of here. All right, I tagged in some new caps down the power supply. 
right there, a pair of 16 microfarad at 450. Okay. So now let's power it up. Let's see if we get anything out of it. We know we had a lot of hum before. Let's see what we have now with some fresh filter caps in it. Okay, I'm using my finger as an antenna. Sounds a little bit better than what we had before. Hey, dear child, if you ask kids before entering a compassion program, what these kids in the room are talking about, what that's a good sign. Tuning cap is. Alright, so let's blast little wipe arms here. The tuning cap, a little deoxit. Work it. Hit that rear bearing. Give it a bit of a workout here. Hopefully that will displace some of the corrosion and stop all that noise. Anyway, we're running again. Seems to be working. Tuning cap cleaned up all right. Seems to be a little dirty spot right there. I'll have to work on that tuning cap a little bit more, but but she's working. So I've got the B and K 747 tube checker set up and ready to verify the tubes in the Philco. But before I do that. I want to share a little story with you guys. So as you know, sometimes I drink wine in my videos, right? And sometimes I like to actually feature the maker of that wine. Like tonight we did the Dark Horse. Well, a friend of mine that I work with was on vacation and he was out boating. I believe he was in a kayak and he spotted this business up on a hill and it turned out to be a winery. And he thought, man, I should get D-Lab a bottle of wine to feature on his next video. And he did. So this guy like parked the boat, went up the hill, got the wine, and brought it to me. So here it is. This is made in Tennessee, on the Tennessee River it says here. And is I, I, I'm probably not going to pronounce it correctly. It's Bar Bargonia or Bordogna. I, I can't pronounce it, guys. Anyway. It's a bottle of Cab, a local made wine down in Tennessee. Let's give it a shot. Okay. Just happen to have an empty glass over here, believe that. Here we go. Kind of has a woody, uh, peppery smell to it. Kind of a light wine. But it's good. Excellent. So the guy that did this for me also has a YouTube channel. And he goes by Real Swede. His name is Rich. And he's a super cool guy. You need to check his channel out. He does a lot of custom fishing videos. And he likes to demonstrate different baits and different boats. And right now, he's really into kayaking. Well, I just happen to have the actual footage of Rich as he went up the hill to gather wine for D-Lab. Let's cut to that. You guys check it out. All right, so I'm doing this for D-Lab. That's a wine Let's see if we can't go up there and get him a bottle. Let's go. All right, here we go. Shooting this for Terry. It's not going to be the best because I'm going up a mountain, but it's Lookout Winery. Here we go, D Lab. This one's for you. I guess it is a Lookout. Oh. 
So how cool is that, huh? I mean, the guy actually took the time to shoot video of getting the wine for me. I'm very honored, Rich. Appreciate it, man. So right now we're checking the 6F6, which is the audio output tube. As you notice, when I was playing the radio, it sounded kind of muddy, a little bit distorted, so I'm kind of wondering about this tube. Yeah, about 20% gain. That tube is hosed. Let's change it. All right, same test with an old Sylvania. Head on hand. Look at that baby, huh? Going to about, eh, close to 80%. So we'll put that one in. All right, I won't bore you guys with watching me push the button and check tubes, okay? But you get the idea. I'll go through and verify the rest of these, and then we'll retest. All right, I got it fired up with a new output tube in it. So, pollutants. Addressing the worst air in your home will transform the entire house. Add the Wave six-stage hot air purifier. The only one with half a filtration, two UV lamps, and other processes for a 99% kill rate of a broad range So you can of hear the audio is much bolder indoor air quality package and a lot more powerful than what it was. The remainder of the tubes in the Philco check just fine on the B&K 747, which is a good thing. So we needed just simply some new filter caps and the 6F6 output tube replaced. And now the radio is operating fine. Yes, there's a lot more you can do to fully restore the radio. But to tell you the truth, I'm doing this as a favor for somebody because they wanted to enjoy their old radio again. They don't have a lot of money, so I'm not charging them any money. I would take a bottle of wine if they offer it. <laughs> I work for wine. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. A lot more to come from d -Lab. See ya. Coverage is underwritten by Liberty Mutual Insurance Company.